Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with creamy mushroom braised meatloaf. That's right, instead of cooking meatloaf and making a mushroom gravy for it, I wanted to know what would happen if I did those together. And what happened was a pretty delicious lunch. So here's what I did. I made a meatloaf. And I was totally going to show you the recipe for this. It's a three meatloaf, pork, veal, and beef. But I wasn't completely thrilled on how it came out. All right, the texture was really good, but the taste just wasn't quite what I wanted. So anyway, I'm going to keep working on that and show you my three meatloaf at a future date. But anyway, the rest of this will work with any of our pre-existing meatloaf recipes or whatever is currently your favorite meatloaf recipe. Ideally, one that pairs well with a creamy mushroom sauce. So once your meatloaf mixture is together, I want you to form it into a loaf that's about six inches across, maybe three inches high. Now you can do this on a sheet pan or in a big wide bowl like I'm doing it, because what you're gonna wanna be able to do is slide this, push this off into our creamy mushroom braising liquid, which is actually the topic of this video recipe. So how did we make that? We're gonna take six ounces of shiitake mushrooms, and as you may know, you can't use the stems. They're just a little too tough and fibrous. So just go ahead and pull those off, all right? You just want the caps. And it's nice if they're whole, because we're gonna slice these up. But if a few break, don't worry. Shiitake happens. All right, so slice those up. And at that point, we're gonna head over to the stove where I have a large skillet on medium high heat with a lot of butter. When I see that foamy part of the butter start to turn a little bit tan, I will throw in those mushrooms with a big pinch of salt, and we're gonna cook those until well browned. All right, so stage one, they're just gonna kinda of get, I don't know, slimy, and they'll just kinda of sizzle like that. And then if you keep cooking, they will dry out a little bit and start to brown nicely like that. At that stage, I'm gonna add a pinch of fresh rosemary. All right, so give that a stir, that just goes a couple seconds. And then I'm gonna add my flour to this, which is gonna make, yes, a roux. So we're gonna stir in the flour. It's gonna get all clumpy and kind of dry and you know, kind of ugly looking, but that's okay. We just wanna coat the mushrooms with the flour. We're gonna just cook that for about three minutes, just like that. It's not gonna look good, it's not supposed to. Don't worry. We're just taking the raw edge off the flour. At that point, you're gonna pour in your cold beef broth. All right, maybe half a cup at a time, just pour it in whisk, pour it in whisk. And because the stock, the broth is cold and the roux is hot, there's no lumps. So stir that in. All right, we're gonna turn the heat up to high, bring this up to a simmer. And of course, cause it's a roux, as soon as it comes to a simmer, it will thicken up. We're gonna season that with salt and freshly ground black pepper. So that's gonna come up to a simmer. It's gonna thicken up. And at that point, we're gonna turn off the heat and stir in our heavy cream. Okay, and that's basically it. So now we're exactly at the stage you saw at the beginning of the video when we slid our already formed meatloaf into the skillet. So one tip, make sure you make this sauce in something that can go into the oven because that's how we're gonna cook this. Now, the next time I make this, I'm gonna put it in the oven like this, brown the top, and then baste it with this mushroom sauce. Here, I was so drawn to that sauce. It just kept telling me, please spoon me over that meatloaf. I couldn't resist, all right? Sometimes the urge is just too strong. And I gave in and I spooned that sauce over the meatloaf and I put it in the oven and it still was fine. But I think I will brown that first next time. All right, that went into a low oven, 325 degrees for an hour and 30 minutes or until an internal temperature of 155. And at that point, it was done. And that's looking very rustic. You could slice and serve just like that. But because that meat did cook in that sauce, lots of stuff came out from that meat. Juice, fat, all right, the proteins kind of coagulated underneath. So you do have some stuff going on in that sauce. So this is something you definitely need to skim the fat off the top. I actually skimmed the fat off the top and boiled the sauce in the pan for about five minutes to thicken it up a little bit. But anyway, I'm sure you figured out the rest. Slice meatloaf, pour over sauce, eat with mashed potatoes. I didn't even pretend to have a vegetable side dish with this. So my theory here was the meatloaf will flavor the gravy as it roasts, as it braises, which it did. And also cooking the meatloaf on top of the sauce would keep the oven nice and moist. And as the meatloaf was flavoring the sauce, hopefully the sauce will be flavoring the meatloaf. All right, so how did it taste? Really good. The sauce, excellent. The texture, the moisture of the meatloaf, excellent. But like I said, I wasn't thrilled with the actual meatloaf itself, but this technique I think was worthwhile. 
And I do think the meatloaf definitely, definitely improved the flavor of the sauce versus just making it separate. So anyway, the next time you're planning to make meatloaf, if you're a fan of mushroom sauces, maybe give this technique a try. And of course, head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts, as well as more info, as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.